Good day, I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. It's Tuesday, June the 20th, and we've got CEO Robert Brown of Finlay Minerals joining us. Finlay is a mineral exploration company focused on base and precious metals in northern BC, and Finlay is getting ready for its summer exploration program, and Robert's here to tell us the plans and details. But please remember, this is neither recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Robert, thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, please tell us about Finlay Minerals and uh, yourselves and what you're up to this summer. Very good. Thank you, Martin, for the invitation. I'm with uh, Finlay Minerals, and we are both discoverers, and we are discovering copper for the world economy. So why copper? Well, for the most part, we are going into a large supply gap, as you can see in the uh, middle chart. Present production and expected production are not keeping up with uh, uh, projected demand. And why is the demand there? Well, the demand is there because the world is slowly moving, in, transitioning into a low carbon energy economy and copper is key to that. Now, I'd just like to point out the top right-hand uh, chart. And I'd just like to note that three of the, of the 10 uh, top producers in the world are also working in British Columbia. Number two, Freeport. Number five, BHP. And number nine, Antipagasta. So I'll just uh, move along. Um, although we're looking primarily for copper in the deposits that we're looking for, there's associated silver, gold, and molybdenum. So we are basically looking for large bulk tonnage, porphyry intrusion type mineralization, and associated uh, gold, silver veins. I, I've touched on the, you know, the uses of copper. To, you know, basically a critical metal, and uh, it's certainly essential in electronics, green technologies. Silver uh, is a great for solar panels and in electronics. Gold has its currency value, and as well has uh, industrial uh, uses as a superconductor metal. And moly is essentially uh, an alloy in the in the making of stainless steel. Now, why Finley? Well, we have three excellent projects in uh, central and northern British Columbia. They're 100% owned. They're all uh, contiguous to or basically very close to past producing mines, and they all are in areas of high exploration activity. The two projects, the Pill and the Atti, are in an area called the Tudigan in the north of the old Kames mine. Uh, and the Red Chris, pardon me, and the Silver Hope project uh, is in central BC. And that's where we'll be uh, focusing uh, most of our attention. The Silver Hope project surrounds and is contiguous with the former Equity Silver Mine, which produced 33 million tons, 185 million pounds of copper, 71 million ounces of silver half million ounces of gold. So we have the continuation to the south of that mineralization. And we've been exploring on that uh, mainly by drilling. And we're ready to begin re resource delineation drilling. I'll just step back for a second. And this is a lovely photo from the Pill property. And the man in the center is John Barexo. He's basically the the inspiration and the founder of Finley Minerals. He was the past uh, chairman of the board. And John is an internationally recognized geochemist. He's worked with major copper companies throughout BC, all through South America and, uh, and, and in Asia. When he was working with Kenco in BC, uh, he and his team discovered five deposits, two of which have been mined out, namely the chemist deposit and the equity silver deposit. And one deposit, the Huckleberry mine, is still in production. 
So he was uh, instrumental in, in, in exploration in BC. And when he went into consulting, he, he reflected on all he had seen internationally and in British Columbia and realized that working in BC, working in the, in the terrains in BC was as good as working in any other train in any other part of the world. So he basically set up shop and uh, from his knowledge of from Kenko and, and working in BC, he started staking some key projects, uh, three of those key projects, the Pill, the Addy and the Silver Hope are now uh, part of Finlay. Now, presently, uh, I'm, I'm president and CEO, I have a technical background. Uh, we have an excellent uh, VP of Exploration, Wade Barnes. He has a lot of experience in uh, Stikine Rocks in, in, in Central BC. And we have Alvin Jackson on, who's an independent director. He's a geologist, a director, and VP of Exploration for Free Gold Ventures. Free Gold is working on a 20 million ounce gold deposit in Alaska. And Alvin was former president and CEO of Eurozinc Mining Corporation which was merged into what is now Lundin Mining, which is an international mining group. Okay, I'll, I'll just move on to uh, the Silver Hope project. Um, we're targeting greater than 200 million tons open pit configuration mineral resource with copper, silver, gold, and moly in, in two zones, the main and the west. Now we've done some substantial drilling over the last 14, 15 years to justify the drilling plans that we have, and which, which included the expansion of the gold zone 100 meters south last year. We are fully permitted to drill, and uh, when funding is available, we'd like to start off with a 3,000 meter uh, program. What we are doing right now, and uh, certainly the work is in progress, is a, a machine learning data review by a group called ALS Goldspot. They are geostatisticians and geologists who basically take all the geophysical data, uh, look at structures, take all the geochemical data, take all the drill data, and just look at all the components, look at all the chemistry, and relatively inexpensively, own targets for drilling. So that's a, a, that's a key review we wanted to do. And there's two main areas we want, wanted them to look at is a two by two kilometer area of, on the main trend in the West Horizon and a two by three and a half kilometer area over in the equities and the Allen zones. Now, why we are using gold spot and not just out prospecting the outcrop is because of the picture <laughs> we can see in the background, which is not particularly glorious. It's basically glacial till. And central BC is covered in glacial till from basically one end to the other. And that certainly includes the Silver Hope project. There's far less than 1% outcrop. And we're dealing with this glacial material, which has been moved multiple times and in multiple directions. As such, uh, soil geochemistry uh, work that's done here, although the soil geochemistry works, because of the movement of the till, we're not actually sure exactly uh, where that anomaly is coming from. So some of the work that we're going to be doing this year is going to be looking through that till. And I'll get onto that in a few slides. Now, a bit more detail as to the location infrastructure. We're basically, we have the Silver Hope project. We're 38 kilometers out of Houston. Uh, we're in an area of past producing mines, we have brownfield projects, and uh, we have great access and a great workforce supplies and equipment out of Houston. and. Uh, other local towns in the area. Now Houston is basically on Highway 5 and on the railway out, which, which runs out to uh, the Pacific Coast at uh, Prince Rupert. 
Now in the area, uh, there's a Silver Queen project that's, that's basically veins and there's a porphyry there. Uh, poplar is a copper moly porphyry. Imperial metals in the blue, um, they're operating an open pit mine on the Huckleberry, which is a copper moly porphyry. And surge copper uh, have just put out a PEA uh, on the Berg deposit, which is uh, sort of on the left side of the screen and in the brown area. The Berg is a, a large copper gold silver uh, deposit. So the area is very active. And in the middle of the Silver Hope project, uh, Newmont, uh, they pr presently control the project, is the old equity silver mine. And I've, I've mentioned that before. It's, you know, I'll show you some detail. You can see the old equity silver mine. Uh, that's the outline of the pit. Uh, the lake in the north, it's actually their, their tails. And mining took place both in the equity silver and at the southern tail zone. Now, since the 70s, uh, everyone has known that, that there's a continuity to the mineralization at equity silver in southern tail, and that rolls off the uh, equity silver property onto the Silver Hope project of ours in, into the Hope superstition and gold zone. And for the last 14, 15 years, we've been focusing in that area understanding the nature of the mineralization, uh, you know, the depth of the mineralization, and uh, basically filling in a lot of gaps. There's still gaps between the zones, which we think we can fill in as well. Now in 2010, uh, it was a geophysical target uh, on the west horizon. And so we drilled a few holes into that, and we basically discovered uh, a copper moly porphyry. And the West Horizon is about a kilometer long, and our deepest hole is down about 600 meters. So it's a substantial uh, copper moly porphyry right along the boundary with, uh, with Newmon. Over the last three, and four, three or four years, we did a lot of geochemistry, airborne geophysics, and ground geophysics in the Equity East and Allen area. And that's a large two by three and a half kilometer area uh, with, with some excellent results. And we want to hone in um, and, and define better targets, better with better target definition in, in both of those areas. Uh, and just, of, of Robert, go ahead. Sorry, just to be clear here, the, the Newmont is the gray area in the middle, and then you have all the surrounding lands. They're just like a little island within your uh, property? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Newmont is in the gray. We are in the white. Yeah. Okay. So the last area we're investigating is uh, an area that was drilled uh, 15, 20 years ago with uh, zinc and silver. And... Uh, we think that SAM zone is still uh, open for expansion. So in some detail, um, this is the work we did in 2021. Uh, we did an IP surveys on, on the lines, 8,900, which are shown in black. We did a MAG survey and the color in the background is basically is a mag survey. There's a mag high here shown in, in red and purple. And what is of great interest is that the equity silver in the southern tail zones are on the edge of this large magnetic feature. And that magnetic feature is basically the goosely intrusion. So the question we had in our minds is, well, what happens if we look at the edge of this goosey intrusion on our side of the property. Well, when we did the work, we did the IP, the two, three large anomalies, which we've outlined in, uh, in brown. And then on the right-hand picture, you can see this outline in red. This is a large area of, that's a silver anomaly in soils. So it's highly prospective area. And we just have to uh, hone in on, on, on a few more targets in that area. Now as well, 
previous work we had done is geophysics down in this uh, main trend and on the west horizon. And uh, so we've still got exploration to do on the east side of the, uh, of the main trend. So we've got a large chargeability and resistivity anomalies and uh, excellent targets for, de for development and exploration in the Equity East and Allen area. Now I'll, I'll focus on the Hope Superstition Gall and, and West Zones. So here we are on the right-hand side. This is a, a map showing underlying geology and all, their, and all the drilling that was done since 1987. This is the outline of the uh, Copper Molly uh, zone on the west horizon. So this is from the southern tail, which was mined by, by Equity Silver. The trend continues through the hope, the superstition, and the gall. So on our side, we have about two kilometers of mineralization in the three zones. And uh, what we need to do before we can put a resort together is redrill some of the old holes from 1988-1987. But in general, there's good continuity. So I'll just uh, take a, a, a cross section in the, to the gold zone. So on the right, it's a very pictures of core showing a uh, very obvious mineralization. There's veins. Here is fracture fillings. Here is massive sulfides. Uh, on the left slide, this cluster of drilling. They're not the holes aren't aren't drilled one on top of another, but there are the three holes are spaced 100 meters uh, apart, and they have uh, very reasonable grades. Uh, this hole here, 0.45 percent copper, 14 grams of silver over 76 meters. 80 meters of 0.33 copper and 10 grams of silver. And this is 200 meters down depth, down dip, which is a long ways. Um, we've got a 0.15% copper, three grams of silver over 162 meters. And in the middle is an 88 hole, 1988 hole, which unfortunately was only partially assayed. And although they had good assays, um, it's really not much good to us um, to, for a mineral resource because they didn't assay all the core. So when we go, so when we raise the money and, and come back in here and do some infill drilling, part of what we have to do is re-drill some of the 87 and the 88 series holes, including this one, number 30. And we'll drill a section all the way through here, right, right through the complete zone. So we're pretty enthusiastic about what we'll find. So this skull zone is about 600 meters long. From here down into here is 300 meters, and it's a reasonable, pitiful configuration as well. Now we move to the north into the superstition. The superstition. Robert, sorry, yes? just going back, the overburden on that, it looks like it just for scale, because the, the left side, you've got 1,000 meters, but I guess that's the altitude of it. So the overburden looks like it's about, what, 60 meters thick? Um, in, in, in this slide, it's about uh, 100 meters thick. It's about 100 meters thick, OK. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's part of the issue we're exploring here. Yeah, OK. As, as we move north, uh, obviously, it's, 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 it's obviously about 10 meters thick over the superstition. But the zone is, there's, although there's mineralization near surface, which was the focus of, of the earlier work uh, in the 80s, uh, we started drilling deeper. We're basically looking for the source of this replacement type mineralization. And uh, in the superstition, we had some, some excellent values. This was whole 11-12. 111 meters of 0.16 copper and, and higher silver, 23 grams of silver and 0.29 uh, grams a ton uh, of gold. And a deeper hole here, uh, 90 meters of uh, nine grams of silver, 0.17 copper. So in our exploration, in our delineation drilling, we'll be looking along the strike and, and up to dip as well. 
And very similarly is Hope Zone, same sort of size. It's a deeper zone, um, but it's quite impressive. 0.3% uh, copper, seven grams of silver, over 162 meters. And in this hole, 0.23% copper, six grams of silver over uh, 282 meters. And within the, that large intersection, uh, which is hole seven, we had 88 meters of 0.48 copper, 11 grams of silver, and 02 grams of ton gold. So it's very, very uh, appreciable. Uh, values in copper and silver. So we're pretty enthusiastic about getting in here and basically expanding these zones. Now, the last zone was the, our discovery, this uh, West Horizon uh, Copper Molly Porphyry, one of the earlier holes with H SH1005, 0.29% copper and 0.01% molly over 209 meters. A much, uh, the deepest hole on the project is 1105, 0.17 copper, 0.04 cent molly over 588 meters. And with a higher grade uh, copper portion uh, on the top of the hole. And here's uh, you know, another 250 meters of 0.23% copper and uh, 0.01 molly. So this is all very, very easily. Uh, configured into an open pit. All right. So basically, uh, I'll just summarize the uh, well, Finley and, and maybe in the Silver Hope project, we're, we're, we're in a very stable jurisdiction. Uh, we, we've been discovering uh, great copper mineralization with comparable grades to other copper bearing deposits and resources. We have more than just copper. Uh, we, we basically have uh, precious metals and, uh, and base metals associated. And our 2023 plans are to uh, further delineate drill targets using ALS gold spot and follow up uh, surface exploration. Uh, which includes uh, geochemical techniques to look down through the tills. It's both uh, mercury vapor and biogeochemistry. And uh, when funded, uh, we'll commence a resource definition drilling on the main trend in the West Horizons. And, we'll, and we're targeting over 200 million tons of copper, silver, gold, molly. All right. Now, just to briefly touch on the Adi and the Pill, they're both up in, the, in northern BC, in an area we call the Tudagon. Um, you can see the area is, is very active. Chemes is a past producing uh, porphyry copper gold. Chemes South Mine has been mined out, but there are two mines which are, or two deposits which have been de defined, uh, Chemist Underground, and right alongside the Addy property is the uh, Chemist East. Now, Chemist is controlled by Centera Gold, and I believe they're uh, reviewing in detail uh, proposed work for the development of the uh, Chemist Underground deposit. The mill from the chemist south of the mining is still on is still on site, so it's care and maintenance. On the Joy property, uh, which is owned by Amark, they have a joint venture partner, one of the largest uh, mining copper mining companies in the world, Freeport MacMoran. And Freeport have been very active on the Joy project, spending fourteen million dollars in two thousand twenty-two. So here's our pill project. On the pill, we're focused on porphyry copper mollies, and gold silver, as well as uh, associated veins. There's been considerable activity on the lawyers project of Benchmark and on the ranch project of Thesis Gold. And, and basically Thesis and Benchmark are, are going to merge, merge themselves together. 
go in detail on the Abbey. Our main activity has been down in the southwest corner. And we've been focused on finding the fault offsets piece of the Chemex East deposit. Uh, pardon me. When the Chemex East was being drilled off, they realized that the eastern half of the deposit was missing because of a large fault which runs northwest up into our, our property. This red area is, an, is a deep IP anomaly. And as we come to the north, our alteration increases and we start seeing veining on surface. Uh, this is some of the veining with uh, pretty decent uh, uh, copper, copper silver, 50 grams of silver in this sample and 0.85% copper. So this veining we believe is above a porphyry system. And uh, other indications of a porphyry in the area are northeast striking veins at the Adicelli. Now they, they're not just quartz veins with uh, copper silver, they are quartz veins with copper lead, zinc, gold, and silver. And uh, last year we were doing some hand sampling and uh, out of a trench, uh, a one meter sample ran a hundred and Pardon me, 198 grams of silver, 1.62% copper, 8% lead, and uh, just less than 1% zinc. So it's a very prospective area, but the key for us is, is focusing in on the chem, which we think is a buried uh, porphyry. Now, the chem S East does not, is buried as well. You see nothing on surface, and the deposit is about Top of the deposit is about 400 meters under surface. So we're, we're excited about uh, this target on, on, uh, on the Addy property. Now, if we pop over to the hill, um, we have this large six kilometer long geochem anomaly in the northwest part. In, in 2005, uh, we basically drilled into Porphyry mineralization, but we had 0.14% copper, 60, over 65 meters. Well, at the time, uh, that wasn't of a uh, huge amount of interest, but it is part of a much larger system. And uh, ATTAC, who have an option on the project, uh, they've been focusing in this Copper Ridge area, and they've been focusing down here in the Pill South area. They've been doing some prospecting as well as geophysics, and you can see some high grade values from, uh, from their work. Almost 4% copper with 173 grams of silver. So, this is, we think that the top of a buried porphyry system, this is just a geochem anomaly sitting on top. There's a large IP feature here, and there's a, a magnetic uh, bullseye as well. Along the east side of the project, in Spruce, Atlas, Copper Cliff, these are various vein manifestations which we believe are above the porphyry systems. So last year, ATTAC did over $500,000 worth of work of surface exploration. They've made their payments and they'll be back on site uh, this year. And as well, ATTAC is a Quite a reasonable company, and they've they've been actually taken over by Hecla, Hecla Mining, and uh, Hill will go into a spin-out company formed by the management of Attack and partially funded by Hecla. So we're looking forward to uh, the work on the project. It, Robert, has, yes. so has ATA, Attack or? Um... Hecla announced their actual plans for the pill property this summer, or like, do, is there details to it, or you just know that they're going out there and you, you don't know? Or well, no, we know we know they're going out there. The key, the key is, uh, I believe, on the twenty third of this month, they vote for the merger. Ah, okay. Uh, so their their key focus has been for the last four months getting this merger completed. And getting their uh, new shell 
basically onto the exchange and then and then getting going on the projects. So they won't be, be up on the project probably until August, just because of their, you know, the, the corporate burden that they've got ongoing. Okay, so a little distracted by the corporate initiatives going on, but planning to head up there in August. Absolutely. To, uh, do the work and, and continue, okay. Yeah. So just a quick mention on the share structure. We're a company, we, we formed as a private group in 1999. We went public in 2003. Yeah, we have 138 million shares outstanding. 193.8 million fully diluted. And key for us is the fact that we have 47 and a half million warrants, of which 26 million are due in the middle of this July. Now, what we've done is we've repriced those warrants to five cents, and uh, hopefully uh, some of the warrant holders will exercise. We're presently trading at four cents. And of key interest uh, pretty well to everyone is the fact that the, the company Finley Minerals has a 50% control block uh, by insiders, and that's namely the Baraxo family. So with that, um, I'll just quickly summarize. We are an exploration company, and we are successful explorers for bulk tonnage porphyry deposits in, in, in Northern BC. We've discovered porphyry copper moly mineralization in both the pill and the silver hope pro properties. And we've discovered porphyry associated copper gold, silver lead, zinc veins and breaches on the pill addy and silver hope. That, and those can be used to vector into uh, porphyry deposits. Our main uh, focus is on the Silver Hope project on the main and the West Trans. Uh, we'd like to get a drill program going for mineral resource uh, definition and estimation. And uh, we will continue to build further drill targets on these projects. Thank you. If there's any questions, uh, fire away. Sure. Um there's clearly been, and, and I guess the focus should be on uh, the silver hope here. That that's where that that's where the the focus of your your work is going to happen. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Um, how much? Uh, there seems to have been a, quite a bit of historic drilling uh, there. Is there any like sort of how many holes, or to summarize the the extent of the the work, how many meters drilled on? Uh, on the silver hope? Um, I haven't added it all up, to tell you the truth. All right. We tend, we tend to drill, you know, 1,500 meters every, on our programs. Yeah. You know, so we probably drilled 10,000 meters, and there's probably 10,000 meters that was, was drilled previously by Placer Dome and Tech in the 80s. Okay. All right. So you've got a lot of work uh, or data to work with. You got to confirm some of the the, the historic uh, drill results and and, and right. that. All right. So if um, so, ideally, you, you you've just raised half a, a million dollars, which I believe was done by insiders. So uh, we're we're seeing some strong insider support there. That gets your team up on the property this summer. Then hopefully with the uh, uh, the the exercise of the warrants, you'll have further funds to uh, continue work through the the remainder of the summer to expand your work up there. Well, most of the summer, and the, the key thing about working at Silver Hope is that it's year round accessible. Okay. And being year-round accessible with road access means your exploration costs are about as low as they can be in British Columbia. Yeah. And uh, working in the Tudigan, working in northern BC is another matter. It's very seasonal. You've got maybe four or five months to get your work done yeah. before you're chased out by the weather. Yeah. And as such, it's you know mostly helicopter work, and it's much more expensive. Yeah. Okay. Um, so ideally, 
uh, what would be the uh, I the ideal results you're looking for from uh, let's say from the initial step of your 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 program here? What, what are the key things you're you're hoping to find? Using uh, ALS Gold Spot, right. and then, well, we just basically want to expand the number of uh, targets uh, on the on the Silver Hope project. You know, we we think we we've, we've been focused on an area that's been worked since the '80s, probably since the '70s, and uh, we we just think there's a huge amount of potential all around the edge of that Coosley intrusion, uh, basically in the in the Allen and the Equity East areas that I outlined. So, I mean, that area is is much larger than the area we're working in right now. So, all right. Uh, will the proposed drilling at Gall and properties to the north allow bringing historic assays up to a, a modern 43101 status? If so, how many holes uh, do you figure would need to be twinned? Uh, we'll need to twin probably six or seven holes. And then there's a, a, a good deal of infilling, which will have to be done as well. Gotcha. So, so we, you know, we're probably looking at we mentioned the first phase of 3,000 meters, but overall we'll probably need another, we'll probably need 10,000 meters of drilling. Okay, all right. Okay, um, that was very comprehensive. Uh, I don't have uh, any questions uh, remaining here. I think you've uh, hit all the key points. Um, why don't you just uh, summarize the key points you wanna highlight here? And uh, and then we will uh, call it a day. Well, the key thing is we are excellent uh, <laughs> explorers. And on all three projects that we have, uh, we have found what we've been looking for. Is the key thing is to find uh, grade and tons. Of, which will excite a major company to come in and develop the project. So that's basically where we're driving. That's that's basically what's 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 driving all three projects. And and key for us on Silver Hope is the fact that we think we can double the number of targets. Um, we've got on on the main trend two kilometers of strike length with with good mineralization, which we want to basically better defined so we can put it into a mineral resort. That's the key starting block for anyone properly evaluating the project. So that's, that's our focus for the next year or two. And I guess your, from what you were saying, like that what you've done on the pill with attack uh, JVing there is that essentially your plan on the other uh, properties as well? Get it to a point where someone with deep pockets can uh, push forward the uh, the exploration. Exactly. So uh, we, we we've done a number of projects on Addy. We looked at the alteration, we looked at the veining, and we're ready to have made a proposal that you know we've got a, a deep uh, porphyry target and. Uh, and there are people looking at the project as we speak. All right. All right, Robert, thank you very much for walking us through uh, Finlay and uh, your various uh, projects there. We appreciate the time. Hope to have you back and get some updates as uh, you move the project forward. Thank you very much for your time, Martin. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.